Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we clean up this rock wall. It's a mess, so let's go. We're on the east side of my house and this rock wall has looked beautiful at times with the creeping flocks draping over the rocks, but the weeds have definitely taken over. So there are gonna be a few things I'm gonna tackle with this project. I'm definitely going to edge the bed to give it a cleaner look and I'm going to take out a bunch of weeds and then finally I'm going to plant some beautiful annuals that I started from seed. So I'll show you step by step how I'm going to do this. I've made a number of videos showing how I use a half moon edger to edge flower beds. So I'm not going to show you how I do the edging but I will show you what it looks like after it's done to give it that nice tidy appearance. This rock wall gets a lot of runoff from the rain. And one thing that we'll be doing is fixing that a little bit. We pretty much have to do that almost every year. Part of the reason why I added plants like the creeping phlox is to just help the wall with the roots and just to retain it a little bit so that when it does rain, that the runoff is not so bad. I just keep trying to tuck in different perennials in this bed to help with that problem. So that's one thing that we'll be tackling to fix this bed this year as well. When it comes to edging the flower beds, especially a small, narrow flower bed like this one, it's very important to edge not only because aesthetically it looks very pleasing to the eye, but also if I don't edge this flower bed, what's going to happen is as I mow the lawn, there are going to be times where I can't get to the edge of the bed and mow every single blade of grass that there is. So what's naturally gonna happen is the grass is gonna go to seed and then it will just put small pieces of grass all throughout this bed, which is what has happened over time. I've spent some time pulling out the weeds from this purple creeping phlox. And before I even started that part of the project, I pushed the creeping phlox back and I pulled out the grass that I had cut. And here are the tufts right here. I figured I'll deal with that after. Let me first tackle the weeds that are around this. And I have some sedum that's right next to this plant. And I pulled out that sedum, which is right here. It's a nice blue color sedum. I have another rock garden. I'm gonna put this blue sedum in that rock garden. I basically wanna delineate between the creeping phlox that's here and the blue sedum that's next to it. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just trim back my creeping phlox. Sometimes you want creeping phlox to creep and take over an entire area of a bed, but this bed is pretty small. It's pretty narrow. So for me, it makes sense to keep the creeping phlox trimmed back. It's still going to look very pretty, but I just want to control its size a little bit. And since it's already gone by, we're now in June here, it's a good time for me to do this. You want to do it any time after the creeping phlox has gone by. And I'm not going to do the top. I'm just doing the sides of it. So like over here, if I just take a chunk of it, and I just cut it. That way, when I'm mowing the lawn where I've edged it here, it will be a nice area that's opened up between the creeping flocks and the lawn. And it just makes it look a lot tidier, the section of the bed. I'll finish up with trimming this around here, but I want to show you one more thing. When it comes to this tuft of grass here, for example, just like I've shown you in previous videos with edging, I then want to just bang out any dirt that's in here because it's good dirt. And then I can take this tuft of grass and just put it in my compost pile and it'll break down. Typically, the grass breaks down a little bit slower than, let's say, vegetable and fruit scraps, but it does break down over time. 
So that's pretty good. And then what I'm just going to do is even out the soil right here. So I'm going to finish cutting this back and I'm going to get the dirt out of these couple of piles here and I will keep on working in this direction of the bed. I love this blue color sedum. I think it's very pretty. And this is where I've been trying to pull out weeds. And I'll be honest, the weeds are stuck right inside of the sedum. So I've tried to pull the weeds out. They're not coming out easily for me. I don't want to just cut the weeds back and leave it so it looks kind of pretty because the weeds are just going to grow back very quickly. And what I also did here was I pulled out the tufts of grass that I had edged. And you can see they're pretty big, the tufts of grass. So in order for me to work, I just needed them out of my way. And I think what I'm going to do now, since I'm not able to easily weed this, I'm going to dig this out. I'm going to pull out the weeds. I'm going to divide this in half. And I'm going to put half of this on the other side of this creeping phlox. I think that will look really pretty. So let me go ahead and dig this out for you, and I'll show you how I pull the weeds out of it. So I'm going to do this in chunks. I may actually end up taking a good part of the sedum apart. It's all right. I know that it's in its glory and it's blooming, but I've shown you in previous videos. If I'm going to tackle a flower bed, I'm going to tackle a flower bed. It might affect the look of the plant for this season, but it'll come back even stronger next season. I'm just pulling out the weeds. Sometimes you just need to do that. You need to dig out a whole plant, pull out the weeds from the plant, and then get the plant back in the ground. And that's probably a good time to decide, does that plant need to go back in the same spot? Can you divide the plant? Today is an overcast day and we have rain coming tonight and tomorrow. So this is an ideal time for me to be doing this type of project. Okay, it looks like I got all the weeds out of here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm going to tackle the chunks of grass that we have here. What a nice clean spot. So let's go ahead and plant some of the sedum together. I think I'm gonna plant it right in the center here because I have a creeping phlox here and another one on this side. So we wanna leave some room here. And I always make sure just to see that there's some root here. And the key is to make sure that the green foliage of the plant is above the soil line and the roots are below the soil line. I'm just tucking them in. While I'm doing this, I'm making sure if I find a stray weed, I'm pulling it out. You don't need weeds to return. Just like any perennial that you're moving during the summer or even late spring, it might be sad for a few days, but as long as you're giving it some water, it should bounce back. I think that's good enough. Push everything in. So I'm going to go ahead and plant one more over there. And then after I'm done with that, we're going to keep on working this way. I didn't record this, but what I did was I dug out a purple creeping phlox that was over here and I divided it. And so I have two pieces here. This will fill up nicely in this section. And I still have plenty of that purple creeping phlox left. I'm going to pot it up and figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm either going to put it in a different section of my yard or I'm going to put it in the backyard nursery sale that I have going on right now. Within this weedy mess is a very pretty creeping phlox. It has two different colors to it. 
And what I'm going to do first is weed around it. Well, I feel good. This has been weeded and edged. And <laughs> it looks like a big mess of weeds. But I'm pretty sure I saw a small piece of creeping phlox in here this spring. So we are going to dig this up and we're going to pull out that weed. I want this to look nice, so it's worth spending the extra effort to go through it, do it properly, and it should reward me next year when the creeping phlox is blooming in this bed, and I show you a video, and it's going to look so beautiful. I have two pieces of purple here, and since this is all divided up, I even though I just planted this year, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. And I'm going to put half of this here, move this over here, and basically alternate the colors. So why don't I go ahead and do that? Okay, so we have purple here, purple down over there. This is purple. And even though the rock is here, we're, we're going to put this light pink colored over in here. And we'll put another piece over here. There we go. I am going to continue working this way. We have a patch of sedum that we're going to tackle next and we're going to continue edging. The sedum is very pretty. It has a little yellow blossom to it. After I'm done weeding and edging this section, I'll zoom in so I can show you what it looks like because it's just starting to bloom. Here is that really pretty sedum I was telling you about. I'm going to zoom in. It has a yellow blossom to it and it has a little bit of a pink shade on the stem of the plant. Really pretty. I tuck that in this little corner here, that little nook, and I moved around some creeping phlox. So right down here is a creeping phlox. And then right next to it is the blue colored sedum. So I played some musical chairs with some plants here. And we have another creeping phlox. So I'm going to continue edging and I'm going to keep weeding. I can tell you there is a lot of grass in here. One thing I also want to point out is that is where we had some critters build some holes. So we are going to have to fill those up. There are plenty of other places for the critters to move around in here. So that's going to be a big project as well. I'm making pretty good progress. It's looking a lot better than it did before. You can see it has a nice edge here. And I did pull out some of the grass. I'm really trying hard to pull it out without pulling out this whole entire clump of creeping phlox. What I want to show you is. When it comes to my creeping phlox, again, I am going to give it a haircut and just trim it because I plan on putting some annuals in here and I really don't want all this encroaching onto the space where the annuals are going to go. And you can see it's a big, huge mat. It's a beautiful plant that goes that way and it really doesn't need to come this way. And that's important. If you have creeping phlox, don't feel like you can't do this. You totally can do it. In fact, it's good for the plant to give it a nice round shape to it. I'm just kind of pulling at it. And if I find a piece that's long, then I'm going to cut it. 
cut it. The other thing I've been doing is I've been picking up the creeping flocks because oftentimes hidden under the creeping flocks are weeds or in this case grass, which is why the weeds then come into a plant like the creeping flocks. So you want to pick up the plant and look for any weeds and remove those. I'm going to keep giving this a trim this way as well as this way. I'm going to come in here and as best as I can pull out the grass and it won't pull out easily so I'm going to have to use something like a hand tool and really pull out the grass. If I end up pulling some of the creeping flocks out with it I am fine with that because it will just regrow. It will fill in any patches that are created. So let me go ahead and do that and I'm going to keep working this way and I'll show you how I'm doing as I go along. Day one of this project is complete. The next thing to do is to add some creeping flocks in the areas that are bare and then also to add a whole bunch of annuals into this spot. It's now day two of this project and I have a plan for at least the creeping flocks. I know that right here is a big chunk of a pink colored creeping flocks. You can see it's still in bloom, just barely. And then the rest of it on the top part of this rock wall is a white color creeping flocks. I think it would look really pretty to have some of this pink mixed in in the center over here where we're missing some creeping flocks. When it comes to retaining walls, it's really important to fill it in with plants such as creeping flocks that can grow and the roots can take over in this area. It really helps with erosion and like when it rains very heavily. I don't want this rock wall to wash out again. So I want to make sure I'm planting things, especially tucked into the parts of the rock wall towards the top part here in the front. I want to make sure I'm tucking in things like this creeping phlox. There are other perennials that I could use, but I do enjoy looking at the creeping phlox, especially in the springtime. So I'm going to move some of the pink creeping phlox. I have another light colored creeping phlox. It's like a white with pink center. I'm going to tuck that in right here. And other than that, I'm going to plant a whole bunch of annuals that I started from seed. So let me get started with that and I'll show you how I make out with it. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking for some small pieces that have already rooted themselves. And I just want to dig out some sections of this pink creeping phlox. Creeping phlox generally spreads pretty quickly. So I just want a few pieces. I'm not going to take this whole entire chunk. my friend who also has a backyard nursery and it says on here creeping phlox light pink with a dark pink eye so i think this is going to look very pretty next to this darker pink colored creeping phlox i'm almost sure that i have some of this creeping phlox down there along with the purple but i'll find out in the spring if that's the case you never have enough creeping phlox in my opinion the irrigation ran last night, so the soil is nice and wet, which makes this a great time to be doing this type of planting project. And I'm okay with these being this close to each other. Next spring, if I want, I can always give this a haircut and cut this back a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and plant this darker pink somewhere down there where I see an open spot. Right here is where the water came down, and you can see it pushed this creeping phlox down this way. This is more of the white creeping phlox that I have on both sides here. I'm just going to tuck some of this right here with the hopes that this will spread down this way as well as down over this way. Just like I always do whenever I dig up creeping phlox, I just want to make sure that I'm keeping all the green pieces above the soil line and all the roots at the bottom of the soil line.
comes the fun part, planting annuals. What we have over here are some red salvia as well as some cream colored salvia. I was thinking that we would plant these in our bed that we've just worked on, as well as some purple pansies that I still have left over. I think those will make a nice splash of color in that section. So let's bring these plants over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant all of the salvia. I'm going to be using Osmocote, which is a slow release fertilizer, just a small pinch in each hole. And then I have a watering can. I'm gonna put some water in each hole as well. We're gonna do the first two together and then I'll do the rest of them. The roots are not too bad, so I'm not gonna tease the roots at all. This has a little bit tighter of a root system, so I'm just gonna tease the roots a little bit. Okay, let me plant the rest of these and then I'm gonna place the pansies and we'll see how they fit in with this pattern. I got all the salvia planted. Okay, time to get the pansies in. I am just gonna plant a bunch of them because I need to get them in the ground. I figured I might as well show you a few of them as I get them planted. And they definitely need to have their roots loosened a little bit. And I'm putting the slow release fertilizer in each hole, but I'm deadheading them. I'm pulling off any leaves that are just old and look bad. I realize it's June and I'm planting pansies, but we literally don't have any days that are much above 80 or 81 in the next 10 days. Actually, most of the days are in the 60s to 70s. So the pansies are still fine. Plus, I need to plant them. I need to get them in the ground. They're better in the ground than they are in the pots. Most of these pansies are purple. There are a few that are yellow. So what I'm going to do is plant all the purple ones, but I'm going to leave a few spots and pop in the yellow ones because I just think that will look nice in this bed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this project with the pansies. And this project is complete. This is just a different angle. I'm really happy with how this looks. I think it's nice. It has a nice pop of color. Pretty simple, but clean. Thank you for following me along with this journey with this rock wall. It's been an eyesore for me, and so I'm really happy now when I come in my backyard. This is one of the first things that I see. So I am very glad that we were able to tackle this project together. I hope you're enjoying your garden as much as I'm enjoying mine. I will see you in the next video, and until then, make it a great day with gardening.